Uh, let's turn to the word of God this day. I'll be reading a small passage from the first book of Samuel, chapter 14, verses 6 to 10. 1 Samuel, chapter 14, verses 6 to 10. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, Very well, let us cross over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand and this will be a sign for us. Now this small passage that we read this day, there are three, three things that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us regarding some of the things, some of the decisions that we take in our lives. And what we can expect from God regarding every, every situation in our life. Now here is a situation where all the Israelites are afraid of the Philistines and they are hiding. Even Saul is hiding. They do not have many weapons to fight against the enemy. But Jonathan, the son of Saul, King Saul, he takes the decision and he says to his armor bearer, he says, come, let us go over to the garrison of the uncircumcised. He says, let us go into the territory of the enemy and he's not whether he's not sure whether the enemy whether the lord will work for him or not he says it may be that the lord will work for us but after that what he says is so very important he says that for nothing restrains the lord from saving by many or by few sometimes we look at our own circumstance and whatever provisions that we have and with the people that who are with us and we think that this situation is so impossible, but here is something that the Holy Spirit teaches us through this man, Jonathan, he says, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few, praise the Lord. It's not, it's not by our strength or by our might, but it is by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We must always remember that. We know the words, we find, we find it in the book of Zechariah, we often say it, but the thing is, unless we believe that God is able to do great things in our lives, whether we have little or whether we have more, we will never see that miracle in our life. Here, Jonathan says that nothing risks the Lord from saving by many or by few. Praise the Lord. That is one of the things that God wants to impress upon us this day. The second thing is, verse 7, where his armor bearer, he says to him, do all that is in your heart, go then here, I am with you according to your heart. Praise the Lord. So we need people who will agree with us regarding whatever it is, whether it is a prayer topic that we have, whether it is a ministry that we are doing or whatever work that we are doing. If there are people who totally agree with us, that's what Jesus says. If two of you here on earth agree upon anything, and pray about it. It shall be done by my Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. It's a great principle in that if you are totally united to the person whom you have chosen for praying, then definitely God says that, Jesus says that you will see that miracle in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this armor bearer, he says that here I am with you. Praise the Lord. You need people who are in one accord with you. Yeah. Full of unity with you. Praise the Lord. People who bring divisions or argue with you or do not agree with you in whatever you are going to do, there will be a lot of clashes then. You will not be able to succeed in those situations. But here we learn a principle from here. It says that here I am with you. Whatever you are about to do, I am with you. The armor bearer, if he had, if he had argued with Jonathan by saying that the enemy is too big, we cannot go against them, we do not have any weapons to fight against them. Only Saul and Jonathan had some weapons. The None of the other uh, people in the army had any weapons with them. That was the state of the Israelites. But here, though he did not, does not have many things with him, he says that I am with you and let us do everything to your heart. Praise the Lord. 
So it's so very important if you are choosing someone to pray with you regarding a certain issue, that person should totally agree with you regarding what you are praying and not fight with you or argue with you or give you suggestions about that. Praise the Lord. This Amabera, he says that I am with you. Then Jonathan tells him, there's another principle that we are learning this day. Very well, let us cross over to this man. We will show ourselves to them. And if they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand and this will be a sign to us. Praise the Lord. So we seek a sign from the Lord that he is going to do the thing for us. He will speak to us regarding our situations and he will tell us what he is going to do, whether he is with us, he is not with us, whether the thing will succeed or not succeed. So three principles that we learned here in this small passage, whether it is with someone you are praying, whether it is some matter that you are praying about, whether it is a ministry that you are going to do, Praise the Lord. Whether it is a church that you are attending, if you have people who have unity and who go in one accord, then God will be able to achieve great things through you. Praise the Lord. Whether with little or with much, God is able to do great things. With a person who is there with you in unison or agreeing with you, you can achieve great things. And whatever situation comes upon your life, lay it at the feet of the Lord, and seek a sign from him, and he will speak to you regarding that. Jonathan places this in the hands of the Lord. He says that if the enemy tells us, come up here, then that will be a sign for us that we should go, and God has the enemy into our hands. Praise the Lord. When Elijah and Elisha were on the other side of the Jordan, and Elijah told Elisha, tell me, what do you want before I am taken up into heaven? And Elisha says, let a double power, double amount of your power rest upon me. We all know that we cannot give something that we don't have. Praise the Lord. Elijah had the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon him. But how can he give double of that to a person who is asking? Praise the Lord. So Elijah says, just says to Elisha, if you see me being taken up into heaven, then know that the power will rest upon you. Praise the Lord. So we put the things into the hands of the Lord when we are not very sure. We need a sign. We need God to speak to us. And Elijah tells Elisha, if you see me be taken up into heaven, then know that the power of the Lord rests upon you. And when we say something, it is not only us who are hearing it, but God is also in our midst. Praise the Lord. When we read the book of Malachi, it says about believers or the people of God who spoke together and God was listening what they were speaking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And as Elijah and Elisha were speaking, God himself was hearing that. And then suddenly it happened. Chariots of fire and horses of fire. They come and Elijah is taken up into heaven in a whirlwind. And we see Elisha looking at that and him seeing what is happening that Elijah is being taken up into heaven, he knew that the power of God, the double anointing, the double power of God well, had rested upon him. That's why he takes the cloak that had fallen from Elijah's shoulder and he stands at, at the edge of the Jordan and he strikes the water with the cloak and praise the Lord God of Elijah. Praise the Lord. He's not asking God, are you there? Will you do this? He's asking a question in rhetoric. He's not expecting an answer from God. God is not going to speak to him. But when he strikes the water and he speaks that word, where is the Lord God of Elijah? We see the waters parting there. Praise the Lord. And the last miracle that Elijah did was the first miracle that Elisha does. And the Bible scholars say that Elisha did double the number of miracles that Elijah had done. Or some say that he had done greater miracles than what Elijah had done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So these are some of the principles that the Holy Spirit is teaching us this day. When we go, go to the book of Judges, 
which is the seventh book of the bible in the seventh chapter and the seventh verse we read something that god telian hallelujah the lord tells gideon in judges chapter 7 and verse 7 with the 300 men that lapped i will save you and give the midianites into your hands let all the others go home praise the lord hallelujah we you know what happened with jonathan and the armor bearer i do not know whether you know it but jonathan and the armor bearer they showed themselves to the enemy and jonathan was seeking a sign from the lord and he had said that if the enemy tells us come up here then we know that the lord has delivered the enemy into our hands and as they showed themselves to the enemy you know what the enemy said come up here praise the lord hallelujah so we see god's guidance in our lives regarding small things regarding greater things if we seek the face of the lord he is there to guide us with his holy spirit and jesus christ he the holy spirit will take things from me and show it to you praise the lord hallelujah the holy spirit is not speaking by himself jesus said that holy spirit won't speak by himself he will take things from me and he will show it to you praise the lord hallelujah the way that the holy spirit honors jesus and the father we see that here he is not doing anything by himself but what jesus shows him the holy spirit shows us hallelujah and the philistines they said come up here and jonathan knew that god was telling him that he would deliver the enemy into his hands and we see jonathan and the armor bearer they were just two of them but they overpowered around 20 people there and god gave them a great victory hallelujah so whether with little or whether with more god is able to deliver hallelujah and to the disciple came this here is a boy who has five loaves and two fish but what is that among so many of us praise the lord that is what that is how we speak how the disciples spoke hallelujah and who says that here is a boy he found someone a little boy who had five loaves and two fish but here was a great multitude 5000 men and then women and children how are we going to feed them they did not have an answer even though jesus was with them jesus was the answer hallelujah praise the lord at least one of them could have said jesus you are the answer you can provide you have done it before you can done you can do it now we have seen so many miracles you can do it now hallelujah but none of them said that philip said that seven months wages are not enough to feed this multitude and then and through bought the boy but the jesus knew what he was going to do praise the lord we do not see jesus praying a prayer there he is just taking the loaves and is giving thanks for that to the father and giving thanks for what we have will multiply what we don't have praise the lord we multiply and provide in our lives hallelujah so let's make it a point for whatever we have whether it is very little we just take it and go into the presence of the lord and just thank him for that lord you have provided this you can provide more hallelujah you can provide for all my needs praise the lord and god is faithful he says that you seek the kingdom and it's you know you seek the kingdom of god first hallelujah then all these things whatever you need will be added unto you whether it is with little or whether it is with much jesus can provide it in your life hallelujah praise the lord we see lord god telling gideon with the 300 men that left i will save you and give the midianites into your hands let all the others go home now what happened was here was another great army the midianites who were plundering the israelites they did not have food to eat they were hiding in caves and then god chose gideon to go and fight against the midianites so we see that gideon sets out with an army of 32000 people to fight against the midianites it's justified praise the lord sometimes we can justify our situations and say that what i'm doing is right 
and then that is what Gideon did. He took a great multitude, 30, 32,000. Even that was very few compared to all the enemies that were there, the Midianites and their camels. It is written that they were like the sand of the seashore. They were just lying down. They were just like locusts all over the place. And Gideon, he sets out with 32,000. And chapter 7, verse 2 and 3, the Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. Praise the Lord. And Gideon must have told God, God, are you joking? Hallelujah. Too many men, he says, 32,000 against a vast army. And God says, you have too many men. If you go with so many men, I cannot deliver you. I cannot deliver Midian into your hands or Israel would boast against me that my own strength has saved me. Hallelujah. So sometimes we put our trust in so many things and think that those are the things that are going to deliver us. But often we fail because of all, of all the things. And the Bible says very clearly in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It will take a lifetime for us to realize the depth of that verse. Hallelujah. God provided manna for his children all through the 40 years, but he also told them man does not live by bread alone. Because most of the elders, they, they died in the wilderness. None of whom were above 20 years of age, they survived to come into the land of Canaan except for Caleb and Joshua. All the others, they ate manna, but they died in the wilderness. They ate quails, but they died in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we have so much to learn from the wilderness journey of the Israelites. And God tells here, 32,000 is too much. I cannot be an into your hands. Or Israel would boast against me and say, my own strength has saved me. Sometimes we think that it is our prayers that are saving us. Sometimes we think it's our fasting that is saving us or whatever good that we are doing for others that is saving us. And so many, so many things that we think that these are the things that is really saving us. Hallelujah. Our wisdom, as we heard when we, you know, it's not the wise in whom God delights, or the one who is powerful in whom God delights, or in one who is rich in whom God delights. But God delights in those, you know, who tremble at his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's be people who tremble at the word of God because that is, what go, that is what is going to save us. Now announced to the army, God tells Gideon in verse 3, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gideon. So 22,000 men left, only 10,000 remained. So, so, many us, so many of us have so much of fears in our hearts. Praise the Lord. And then God cannot do much when there is fear in our hearts. So God tells Gideon, tell all those who are fearful, go home. So 22,000, they had come to the battle, you know, without any heart to fight in the battle. They were worried about so many things. Praise the Lord. So God told Gideon, you send them away. And then only 10,000 were left. We read in verse 4, the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then Gideon must have thought, are we speaking about the same battle or God is speaking about something else and I'm going somewhere else because I see a huge army in front of me. I see a huge enemy in front of me. Praise the Lord. Is God speaking the right thing? And God tells Gideon, too many men are there with you, 10,000. I did not. I do not need so many of them. And God gives him a sign and tells him, take them down to the water and I will thin them out for you. They say, this one, if I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. 
praise the lord and that is when god tells gideon with the 300 men that left i will save you and give the midianites into your hands praise the lord hallelujah just 300 men against a vast army whether with little or whether with many god is able to save us so gideon when we read about gideon here he was very fearful but we see god did not tell him to go back that is a surprising fact when we read on in this chapter verse 9 onwards during that night the lord said to gideon get up go down against the camp because i am going to give it into your hands if you are afraid to attack so even gideon he was fearful in his heart but we see that whom god has chosen he does not send him back home hallelujah but god strengthens him god empowers him with signs god empowers him with his holy spirit and makes him stand strong we read about timothy he was a very timid man i told you all before praise the lord he was not meant for the ministry but we see god choosing timothy for the ministry and then paul had to admonish him many times you need to be strong you need to be prepared for all this and he tells him as we read in the letter to timothy he says god has not filled us with a spirit of fear praise the lord but with power and love praise the lord and with a sound mind he stays and all through the first and second letter we see paul encouraging timothy you must go forward you must do this for me you must do this for god and finally we know that timothy became the bishop of ephesus hallelujah in where john was an elder hallelujah so god is able to strengthen each one of us even though we have fear in our hearts yet god strengthens kidian because he is the chosen one he says get up go down against the camp because i am going to give it into your hands if you are afraid to attack go down to the camp with your servant pura and listen to what they are saying afterward you will be encouraged to attack the camp so god gives us signs and god gives us people who are willing to stand together with us to fight our battles and also in the ministry to go forward hallelujah so we see here gideon he takes his servant pura and he goes to the camp of the midianites and the midianites now as is as i said about the enemy it's written here the midianites the amalekites and all the eastern people had settled in the valley thick as locusts their camels could no more be counted than the sand of the seashore hallelujah and god says i need only 300 sometimes we wonder at what god is saying and what is doing hallelujah but we must always remember it's not by might and not by power but by the spirit of god what are your mighty mountain before zerubbabel you will become a plain maybe it is at your workplace or whichever in the ministry or wherever you are uh working for Jesus Christ you may think the people of the area are so cruel and they can do all kinds of things to you but you must remember that they can do nothing unless Jesus allows it in your life when satan had to attack job he had to go and ask permission from god god brought up the the topic regarding job gave a good testimony about job and then satan says that why does he worship you because you have protected him you have blessed him you have put a hedge of angels around him there's a hedge of protection around him praise the lord and he's asking permission from god he says stretch out your hand he says to god and that he has praise the lord so if you are a committed child of god satan cannot touch anything of yours until god allows it otherwise you must have done something that has really displeased god and you are sinning and not really confess that sin but the sins that are confessed are washed away with the blood of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord and as god strengthened gideon his his friend we see gideon was 13 gideon arrived 
just as the man was telling a friend his dream. Praise the Lord. So God will arrange signs for us in our life. This is the way that you should go. I will show you the way. I have my eye upon you to show you the way. See here, there are two uh, Midianites and one of the Midianites, he saw a dream. It's not for his blessing. It's for the blessing of Gideon. Praise the Lord. He says, I had a dream saying, a round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. And believers take years together to, you know, interpret a dream. Here, a Gentile, he's a Midianite. He's interpreting the dream, dream immediately. He says, his friend responded and he says, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God keeps watch upon your life. Praise the Lord. To lead you and guide you. And though many a times in our lives, we have so many doubts coming up and we are weak in our faith. You know, Jesus still strengthens us. Hallelujah. You see Peter who wanted to walk on the, walk on the waters. And Jesus said, come. And Peter started walking. He was just experiencing a great miracle in his life. But then he looked at the wind and he started sinking. And he cried out to Jesus. And Jesus stretched out his hand and helped Peter. But Jesus, initially, what did he say? You of little faith. But he did not push Peter into the water after saying that. He took Peter with him and then they got onto the boat. Praise the Lord. Many a time in our life, Jesus may say that, you know, you of little faith, but he does not leave us nor forsake us. He takes us to himself and he embraces us and he helps us to go forward. Hallelujah. Great is the love of God. Hallelujah. Everlasting and never failing love of God. When Gideon heard the interpretation, he bowed down and worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We see people, these 300 people, they went with one mind to fight against the enemy and God gave them a great victory. They did not have to fight initially. When they did what God said, the enemy started fighting between themselves and they destroyed each other. Three principles the Holy Spirit is teaching us this day. Whether with little or with many, God is able to do great things. With people who are in one mind and unity with us, we can achieve great things. And God is always there to give us a sign to go forward in our lives, whether we are to do it or not do it. With the 300 people, whom God had chosen, God gave a great victory to Gideon and all of Israel. Praise the Lord. So God is faithful. There are things that we have to learn from the word of God if you have to go strength upon strength. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Acts chapter 1. You may say that this is from the Old Testament. These are principles that worked in the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? When we come to Acts chapter 1, we see Jesus speaking to his disciples before his ascension. Verse 4 onwards he says, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. That's Luke 24, 49. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Hallelujah. If you are seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit and have not yet received it, seek him. Because Jesus said that if you, though you being evil, can give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit and good gifts to them who ask? Jesus is reminding his disciples before his ascension, do not depart from Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father. Hallelujah. Verse 12 onwards we read, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. That is from where Jesus ascended into heaven, from the Mount of Olives, and he's going to come back on the same mountain, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. 
praise the lord peter james john andrew philip but thomas bartholomew matthew james the son of alphaeus simon the zealot and judas the son of james and next words is very important these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and mary the mother of jesus and with his brothers praise the lord hallelujah jesus told them wait for the sign praise the lord if you are seeking something from god wait for that sign from god and he will show it to you hallelujah jesus told them you wait here till the father fulfills his promise and just think about this bunch of people they are around 120 of them if they have to get together in one accord in prayer it's so very difficult praise the lord they did not agree when they were 12 they were always fighting among themselves who is going to be the next leader you know when they were traveling to jerusalem and jesus was telling them i'm going to jerusalem and they are going to crucify me the disciples are speaking among themselves who is going to be the next leader and the mother of james and john comes and tells jesus in the resurrection let my one son sit on your right hand and the other son sit on your left hand so some of the things that are there in our minds our ambitions our objectives our aims they may be not really what god wants but here they set all that aside 120 of them and there are women also jesus mother is there and his other brothers are there who did not agree with him who came to jesus only after his resurrection praise the lord they did not have faith in him but these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication so if we can keep aside our differences god can do great things for us and for that we need to humble ourselves if we keep all those things away our ambitions our aims our objectives and leave the things you know sometimes our ambitions in ministry may be different from what god wants ministry is not the great thing that god thinks about first god is everything you should love the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength and with all your soul what are all the four things and when we go into ministry some of us we make a decision you shall love the ministry with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength and everything and then god is going on another tangent and we are going on another tangent somewhere else after 10 years you will realize that god is somewhere else and you are somewhere else praise the lord and you have wasted 10 years of your ministry praise the lord hallelujah so seek the what does god want what does jesus want from you find that out hallelujah and then do that and that will bring satisfaction in your life hallelujah that will bring satisfaction in your life contentment in the ministry praise the lord hallelujah so we can wait upon god because he will open up doors for wait upon him and when they sat in one accord in unity we read in chapter 2 and suddenly when the day of pentecost had come they were again it is written they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then appeared to them divided tongues as of fire one sat upon each one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance praise the lord hallelujah a man who was so full of zeal for jesus christ peter jesus had to change him from the inside so that he could do something for him outside praise the lord and that is another story that i'll speak to you some other time but god had to change jesus had to change peter's heart inside so that peter could do something for jesus on the outside praise the lord and that happened at pentecost and before jesus ascended when jesus asked him three times do you love me more than these and peter was changed and then with one accord when he was with the other disciples we read that 
he preaches one sermon there at pentecost verse 14 to verse 41 verse 41 says that then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day about 3000 souls were added to them praise the lord hallelujah so may you may be waiting for souls thinking that why your church is not growing why things are not moving in your life why the ministry is not flourishing think about jesus about god about what he is doing and the rest will be taken care of by jesus if he wants you to become big you have to have for you to have a ministry he will give you that if he wants you to be you know one of those apostles who had just a single line to say in the word of god he will choose you like that praise the lord we do, we do not read about what bartholomew did praise the lord but we read so much about paul and peter and some of the others are so you know they are lost somewhere in the gospels and we do not hear about them later it doesn't mean that jesus you know just discarded them after choosing them as disciples whatever he wanted them to do they did they finished their ministry they joined with the lord hallelujah verse 46 so continually continuing daily with one accord in the temple it's not only on one occasion but here they are continuing in the same vein so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house they ate their food with gladness and one word that is written we must underline which says simplicity of heart praise the lord they are not thinking them as some big apostles because they have you know done some miracles and received the anointing and they are filled with the holy spirit nothing of that sort they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart nowadays if you speak to a pastor you know they will ask you how many people are there in your church praise the lord and you may have just 10 people in your church and if you start you know but those things don't matter to jesus those are all worldly things praise the lord hallelujah you be faithful in your calling and god you know will glorify himself through the work that you are doing simplicity of heart praising god and having favor with all people and the lord added to the church daily those who were being saved hallelujah so you find out people who would really pray with you regarding the matters that you have in your lives a good friend who will not argue with you regarding the prayer topic that you are placing in his hands or whatever he places in your hands you pray a simple prayer agreeing with him so that is what unity is all about and we see jesus also knew though he had chosen 12 disciples at some places where he went he just took three of them to jairus house he just took three of them we see peter james john going there to the mount of transfiguration we see he taking again peter james and john with him praise the lord hallelujah so there are some principles that we can learn from that and even after jesus was not there we read in the book of acts peter and john were together most of the times and they went into the temple acts chapter 3 speaks about a great miracle that they did isn't it they went out there was a man who was lame since birth 40 years old man silver and gold i do not have but he says that what i have i give you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth you walk hallelujah praise the lord and then the man he walked and he jumped and he was praising god in the temple praise the lord and even in the life of paul in his first missionary journey he took barnabas with him later on he did not have closeness with barnabas so he took silas with him and then we see timothy coming into the pictures so we have paul silas silas timothy and luke is there so these became a team wherever they went praise the lord and god could do great things through them whether with little or whether with much god is able to do great things in your life too and in my life to find people who are in one accord with you unity with you not arguing with you when you place prayer points with them but agreeing with you as jesus said if two of you he did not say if 15 of you gather together and have the unity he said if two of you agree upon anything here upon earth 
it shall be done by my father in heaven praise the lord hallelujah and the third thing is god will always give you a sign god will always give you a sign in your life if you seek for that sign praise the lord he will speak to you regarding the situations in your life and as jonathan said if the enemy says come up here then we know that the lord has delivered them into our hands and as god told gideon you go into the enemy camp and what you hear there will strengthen you encourage you and i will give the enemy into your hands praise the lord certain principles the holy spirit taught us this day let us cultivate those principles in our life and we let us see god doing great things in our life in the life of others also and in our own lives let's bow our heads in a moment of prayer Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of worship and meditation of your word. Thank you for helping us to meditate, O oh Lord, on your word this day. Let us take those principles into our lives, O oh Lord, as we live as Christians and as we are in the ministry, O oh Lord. Finding people who are in one accord with us and praying in unity. and working in the ministry with unity o oh lord hallelujah and fighting our battles in unity o oh lord as we see as we as we see jonathan and his armor bearer as we see gideon and the 300 people coming together in unity o oh lord as we see the 120 people who came together in one accord and prayed and on the day of pentecost o oh lord they were all filled with the holy spirit and then they did great things for the kingdom of god Thank you Jesus that when we pray to you that you will bring people into our lives who will agree with us oh lord in prayers who will agree with us in the ministry that we are doing oh lord and thank you that your holy spirit will be there with us continually giving us signs oh lord as Jesus said the holy spirit will not speak on his own accord but he will take things from me and show it to you thank you lord and we pray for each and every person who is here this day that we may seek to glorify your name o lord with what our ministry you have given us whether it is a small ministry or a larger ministry o lord help us to be faithful in what you have called us to o lord and help us to love you more than we love what we are doing for the kingdom of god o lord yes thank you jesus for each and every one thank you for your presence in our lives thank you for blessing us together and those who are seeking signs in their lives so lord as you spoke to jonathan as you spoke to gideon as you gave a sign on the day of pentecost o lord let the holy spirit speak to us continually o lord through the word of god and through dreams visions and through his still small voice o lord and let your name be glorified in all things in jesus name we pray amen